Hey everyone, so this is Elementary, uh, Season 5, Episode 4, um, called Tiny Penny, The Sky is Falling. Um, so basically the episode starts off with Sherlock and Marcus trying to prove this guy, um, I, with, I don't know if it's, I don't, can't, I couldn't tell if they, uh, if, if the guy's first name was Enrique or the last name was Enrique, but either way, uh, guy has a name named, named uh, uh, of Enrique. So, they're trying to prove that this guy was lying about who, uh, a crime he witnessed um, because, um, I don't know, Sherlock just, just doesn't think that the guy is telling the truth about what he witnessed. So, he has Marcus, you know, hold this, this uh, punch bowl full of water, um, and try to uh, and has try to uh, has Marcus you know turn around as best he can to see uh, what the picture that Sherlock put up on um, a shelf in the precinct is and um, it turns out that um, he Marcus can't really do that without you know turning around too quickly or or anything like that. So, um, that's why Sherlock thinks the guy is lying, um, because, and also because of the fact that the victim was, uh, the victim of the crime was known to be an exotic animal smuggler, um, who was smuggling iguanas from Ecuador, where the guy, uh, the, the Enrique guy was from. Um, so, <laughs> one little, one little, um, you know, uh, one little, um, little scene at the end there that I thought was very funny was that Marcus turns around, sees that it's a poop emoji, and he's like, a oh, poop emoji? And, and, and Sherlock's like, I thought it was ice cream. I'm like, dude, like, clearly he doesn't use emojis all that much, or go, I mean, or just text all, well, he probably texts, but he just, just doesn't use emojis all that much, because he thought it was a fucking chocolate ice cream, like, without a fucking cone under it, or like a bowl or something, I don't know, anyway. Um, I thought that was really fr freaking hilarious. I thought that was cute, seeing uh, and showed that Sherlock really doesn't do emojis all that much. So anyway, um, elsewhere, a couple is uh, who had who owns this apartment um, has come back from a trip or uh, whether it's business or pleasure or whatever or something. They they come back from wherever they went um, and find the place trashed. Um, turns out they had rented the apartment out to uh, a couple pe a couple people. Um, and um, it's uh, it, it, it's basically the people who they rented to uh, fault who uh, with for the whole thing. Um, and so the guys like I want to call the cops because um, they vandalized my, uh, they basically vandalized my rug, my $50,000 rug, um, so I want to get, you know, money back for it, and all this stuff, um, but the wife, his wife's like, well, you can't, because the people, because, um, they had, the, the, the couple had this deal where, um, it, uh, had a deal where, um, the renter, it, the, whoever they rent to, uh, if they manage to do what the renters did here and trash the place, um, somebody will cover the costs cost of cleaning it up and and all that stuff. Um, and but in order for them to do that, they don't want the cops to get involved, so they can't call the cops. Um, and the wife knew this, but didn't say anything to the husband. So, um, there's that whole deal. Sorry about that. Um, then the guy sees a fireplace poker sticking out of the wall and tries to pull it out, but doesn't realize that in the apartment adjacent to it, uh, there's a dead body attached to the rest of the fire poker. Um, so, after, you know, it comes back from the opening credits, Sherlock, um, finds out that, uh, that Gregson's boss, 
um, who came to the precinct last night while he was there, uh, wanted to look at a number of cases that he and Joan helped solve. Um, Marcus then calls and about the guy in the apartment on the poker, and so they go over there, and Marcus says that the guy, the victim's name is Russell Cole, and he worked for an investment firm. Um, Marcus doesn't think it's premeditated, but she, like, clearly, right off the bat, debunks that idea and says that, um, it was premeditated, it was just the fact that, um, the gun that the perpetrator, uh, you was planning on using, uh, jammed or, what, like, the, the, um, little, uh, magazine that holds the, um, bullets doesn't, uh, had, you know, gotten jammed or whatever and, um, therefore couldn't fire. Um, so they had to use, they had to improvise and use a, um, fireplace poker. Um, and they find that Cole's laptop is missing. Um, then, uh, Marcus and Joan make plans to go to the investment firm to, um, uh, talk with, uh, Cole's boss and, um, uh, so, uh, Sherlock can go talk with Gregson. Um, at the investment firm, Cole's boss, Mr. Barrett, doesn't really have much to say. Um, so, then we find, uh, we're at the precinct with Gregson, and Gregson says that the precinct is being considered for unit citation, for example, or simply work. Um, sometimes, uh, civilian employees are given recognition, and he wants to put Sherlock and Joan's name. Um, in the hat as well to be uh, recognized as people who help with that uh, exemplary work. Um, but Gregson has been getting some resistance because of that. Um, Joan elsewhere goes off to talk with Barrett's wife, Lori. Um, and I figured pretty much like right off the bat, I don't know what it was about it, but something something when they when Joan and, and when Marcus were talking to her his her husband at the firm made me think that she that Lori and Cole were having an affair. For so I don't know. I I mean I mean I, I think it's cause of the fact that like um uh, um, I think it was because of the fact that it was brought up in uh, the uh, questioning of uh, Mr. Barrett that Cole sometimes disappeared uh, for, I guess, days, weeks, or months on end or something. Um, and then all of a sudden, um, we find out that Lori had gone uh, on a trip um and, a, and like I guess I guess a raffle or something like that um, for from a uh, charity event, and she supposedly went with a girlfriend to uh, either Hawaii or Maui or something. I don't know, uh, so like Hawaii or something like that. And um, so she had gone with a, a girlfriend. Like I didn't buy that that she just went with a girlfriend. Like I mean, if she did, then I wouldn't I, like she because I I don't remember like the guy, uh, like, Barrett, I don't remember Barrett saying the name of the girlfriend, uh, because if the girlfriend was, uh, there, she would have been in the picture, and Barrett didn't, you know, um, he didn't, um, name the girlfriend, uh, like, say that, that full name of the girlfriend, so, that went with her, so, I, I guess my, my mind jumped to that, so anyway, but yeah, she pretty much confirms that she and Russell were having an affair, um, and she reveals that Russell had a cabin that was about an hour away upstate. Um, and so, uh, they go to the cabin and they figure Russell was the only one there. So Lori wasn't the one with him, um, up there. Um, uh, Cole was working on something regarding astronomy. Um, and there's this, there was this big map. Um, of, uh, what I assumed was the sun and Earth's orbit around it, um, and so they take the map, um, basically, uh, and bring it back to the precinct, um, and it's basically a map of all the potential asteroids that could hit the Earth and kill all life on Earth, including humans. So, Cole thought, um, the way countries were measuring uh, asteroids was all wrong. Um, 
So, anyway. Sherlock and John then go to the New York Science Center to talk with this guy named Julius Kent, who uh, is pretty famous um, and does, you know, speaking, uh, he, do, he does, uh, I think, like, does some TV show or something like that where he hosts, uh, like, he talks about science and astronomy and all that. Um, apparently, he and, he and Sherlock went to uh, boarding school together. So, um, apparently, Kent was very um, pretentious. I think that's what Sherlock used um, back then, and he still is now, because apparently Kent loves to gloat. Um, I don't know. I mean, it doesn't seem that far off the mark, but I'm not going to really say for sure. Cause he doesn't, I mean, he just seems kind of just full of himself, that's all. He just seems really full of himself uh, and all that. So, um, anyway. Kent says that anyone who makes the livelihood on the current way to determine asteroid size would want Russell dead since he was trying to prove the way we, uh, we, we go about it is all wrong. So, Marcus calls and then says a waitress saw him quite a few times at the place she works at, which was out of the way of his cabin. Um, once there, Marcus and Joan question her. Um, Sherlock, uh, decides to do other things since they don't really need all three of them there to question one waitress. Um, we'll figure out what that other thing is. And well, I think, well, I think he lies saying that he was planning on going somewhere else, uh, when he, in fact, he was doing something completely different than what he said. Anyway, so uh, Marcus and Joan question the waitress, and she reveals that when um, Russell will come in, he will bring his laptop, but he will never use it inside the restaurant, even though other patrons would do this, would, would bring their laptops and work on it in the, in the um, restaurant. Um, what he would do is he would always go outside and to the parking lot and, and use it. Um, so Joan and Marcus go outside and find, and they, um, she, well, Joan finds a thumb drive that's, um, uh, that is um, cemented into the wall, um, and that way, uh, what could happen is, according to Joan, um, two people, Russell and um, his partner, or at least two people, Russell and his partner could uh, could um, hook up their laptops or whatever uh, computers or whatever to the thumb drive uh, and put files onto the thumb drive for the other person to uh, get. Um, then they could, you know, leave messages on the thumb drive and all that stuff. So that way they wouldn't leave any trace online. So um, then we go to Sherlock going to speak with Deputy Chief Prosky, who was um, talking with Gregson about the uh, citation, um, and Sherlock just wants to bow out, um, Prosky's, you know, reveals that John was there and was in there previously wanting to get credit, uh, and, and stuff like that, so, um, which shocks, uh, Sherlock, no, no, I mean, I wasn't trying to rhyme there, sorry, um, anyway, so, uh, John and Marcus then find out that on the dumb drive, uh, Cole was being helped with a paper he was writing on how to get a better size, how to get, um, uh, how to determine a better, how to determine the size of asteroids better. Um, they also found out the mistakes in the paper were deliberate so that experts in the field would take months, uh, to, um, detangle and all that, uh, so the telescope project would get canceled. Cole also wanted to up the price of what he was originally offered, so they figured that the person who hired the paper hired him to write the paper killed him because they didn't they didn't want to give him more money. Um, uh, they then bring Barrett in and tell him what they think happened, which is um, Barrett figured that uh, the company who was uh, uh, sponsoring the you know telescope project would take a nosedive. Um, and their stock, I guess, stock prices, um, so they would, um, uh, so he invested so that, uh, invested so that, uh, if they took a dive, he would gain, he would gain more money or something like that. Um, I think that's the gist of what people do when they, I guess, you, when they invest. Um, and so, um, 
he instructed Barrett, or uh, he, he instructed Cole to uh, write the paper so that the company would take the nosedive so that his profits would go up. Um, but, of course, Barrett denies this and says he was at a dinner when Cole was killed. Um, so, basically, they cut him loose and check his alibi, which I'm, assu- I assume, checked out because, I mean, they didn't say it later on in the episode, so I assume it checked out, even though they didn't say it. Um, then, Sherlock's like, well, I tried to contact Congress- Congresswoman Salazar about the case, but she wouldn't call back. She had Kent use his celebrity status to call her and get an appointment. So, in Salazar's office, or, or uh, her, or, um, it's, it's this guy, uh, Grant Huber, who's uh, office they're in, um, and he's, I think she, she said that he was her, her, her science advisor or something like that, um, he, he, something, he had something, he had something to do with sci- the sci- uh, uh, science and everything, so that's the only reason why he was in the um, office, like, they even went to his office in the first place. Anyway, so basically, th- once in his office, um, they explain that everyone in the astronomy fields who was working on this, uh, project, or, yeah, pretty much who's working on this project and is, and is affected by this project, was affected by Cole's paper. Not just the, not just the majority, so everyone was. They also say that the paper, this paper pretty much pushed astronomy, astronomy science back a decade. Um, back at the house, Charlotte theorizes that since Cole's paper pushed back that part of science, uh, for 10 years, that that was the whole point of, to writing the paper. Sherlock also thinks that not everyone was hurt by Cole's paper. The four companies that are invested in the starting, starting project are only concerned about mining asteroids um, and not saving the human race if they end up, if there ends up being a, um, uh, an, uh, uh, what is it, um, a, a catastrophic collision from an asteroid. Um, and, uh, usually, um, asteroids, uh, like a collision course, cat- catastrophic collision course, um, from a, from an asteroid only happens about every 5,000 years, so if, if, um, if oh, the project is pushed back 10 years, it's not really going to affect, um, trying to, map out the, the asteroid sizes, uh, like, um, like world governments want to do, uh, because world governments only want to figure out the asteroid's size so that humans won't get killed or hurt or whatever, and that's the, and so, basically, the four CEOs from the four companies conspired to get the project halted for 10 years. Um, Sherlock then brings up what he heard from Prosky and said and says that the reason he doesn't want to accept any credit is because he foresaw a slippery slope at Scotland Yard when he was awarded credit there. Because um, I think that's when he was uh, that was when he first started uh, his drug addiction was at Scotland Yard and apparently uh, when he was awarded credit, um, I guess it went to his head or something and so therefore he started using drugs or whatever and and. It, that way, that when when he um, took drugs, he would you know get more credit for solving crimes faster and all that stuff. So I think that's the reason why he said he was against it in the first place. Anyway, so Sherlock believes he figured out who Cole is the next morning because he believes that the killer um, gave him his, the rash, the uh, poison ivy rash that he contracted. Um, and so by meeting with the killer, he contracted the poison ivy. Um, so they then meet Grant Huber, who, um, is the aide, I guess an aide, aide to, is the aide to, uh, uh, Congresswoman Salazar, who they met with the previous day, or, like, previously, and, um, he's the science guy that I was talking about. And they tell him that he conspired with Cole so the company he used to work for could mine for asteroids. Um, Huber got poison ivy from Cole's cabin. And Huber is part of the 20% of people who don't show any symptoms when they contract poison ivy. 
Um, Huber then transferred it to his couch and his office, and when Sherlock sat there um, and put his uh, arm, I guess his left arm on the couch, uh, arm on the couch, he got the poison ivy on him. And so that's um, that's how they figure out figured out how uh, who killed um, Cole. Uh, Sherlock then comes to the ceremony a little late, but he comes anyway. Um, and that's pretty much the entire episode. Um, this was a standard episode. I I mean, I loved it. I mean, there were, I mean, there weren't as many cute and funny lines as, um, there, there usually are. Um, so, I mean, the one cute, funny line that was, that I thought was keen to funny was, uh, at the beginning of the episode when Marcus, like, Marcus said, uh, a poop emoji, and then Sherlock thought it was, uh, the poop emoji was a cho- with chocolate ice cream. Um, anyway, that's like, I mean, I mean, there wasn't as many funny and cute things in there, um, as before, like, as, as they usually are, but, I mean, that's, that's, I mean, can't expect it to happen every single time, so I'm not that mad. But, I mean, so far, I mean, I like it, I mean, Johnny Meese is not, it's not really my thing, but, I mean, and, and, I mean, they touched on it, I mean, I don't think they've ever have touched on astronomy before, but, I like, I mean, I liked it, I mean, getting to know a little bit about astronomy, um, maybe I had astronomy in my high school, I don't know, I don't know why, that's besides the point, but, um, yeah, I mean, it was alright, I mean, um, so, yeah, there's nothing wrong with the episode, it's just, it was just a meh episode to me, it was just meh, I mean, it's just, just a standard episode, nothing spectacular or anything. Um, now, as far as next week's episode goes, there's this guy stalking and killing online predators, and Joe and Sherlock must find out who it is. Um, by online predator, I'm assuming they mean someone who lures underage girls to meet them. Um, like, they pretend to be um, a, a teenage boy and lure teenage girls, or vice versa, where they lure teenage boys by being pretending to be teenage girls, or whatever, or another teenage boy, or whatever, um, so that they can, you know, do whatever the fuck they want with them, um, and so that's what I'm assuming that is, so that's what they mean, but who knows, I mean, I could be wrong about that. Um, but that's more of my, that's usually what I tend to, you know, expect out of these episodes, I guess. Um, maybe I've just been watching too many, too much Criminal Minds. Who knows? Um, I guess I I expected, I expect the, um, I expect the, uh, um, stuff to be too much, to to be too dark or something, because I've been watching Criminal Minds for, like, a while, like, the last like, five years, maybe, uh, so, who knows, anyway, um, they really didn't get much in the clip, in the, uh, um, in the preview to really, uh, give that much, uh, to let people predict anything, so, uh, I don't necessarily think that I can predict anything, um, well, the only thing I can predict doesn't really have anything to do with the, what we saw saw for next week's episode. Um, what I am thinking about predicting, or pretty much I'm going to predict, is um, about Captain Gregson and... Uh, oh, what the hell is her name? I can't even remember her name now. That's so sad. Um, his girlfriend, Penny? Is it? I don't know. So I feel like it's something to do with P. P. Um, can't even remember. This is so sad. Like, we have I haven't seen her all episodes, so that's why it's like I fucking forgot about it. Um. Anyway, so, uh, I'm thinking that they will end up getting married, uh, somewhere around right, like, right before the winter break. Um, uh, I'm thinking, I'm thinking it's going to be... Like, they're going to have, like, this Christmas episode or something where, um, uh, they're going to have this, like, this Christmas episode or something, um, 
where uh, they um, they're gonna have this oh, page. It's page. Um, yeah, it's page. Okay. So yeah. Anyway, so they're gonna have this like this like Christmas episode where they where the Captain Gregson and 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 Paige end up getting married. Um, I'm thinking that's probably what's gonna happen is that that's when they're gonna, you know, have this whole wedding ceremony if they, I mean, they said that, like, they, they, Sherlock offered that they could, like, brought up, like, they could just elope, but I, I mean, like I said, I doubt that that's what's gonna happen, that they're gonna elope, I doubt that's what's gonna happen, I'm thinking that they're going to have, um, uh, they're going to have, uh, them, um, uh, they're going to have like this wall, uh, small wedding ceremony and all that stuff. So that's what I'm thinking. Um, and they're going to invite, you know, Marcus and 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 Joe and Sherlock. Um, and all that stuff. So, um, actually, I'm I'm going to make another prediction. Um, I'm going to predict that we're going to see uh, Mycroft again sooner or later because he last time we saw him he went under uh, witness protection um with, with that with his whole ordeal i can't remember what it, what um what he had done um i think it's something to do with his one of his restaurants where someone was doing something some legal activity in his restaurant and so therefore he you know uh he had um turned state evidence on that on that person um, and so therefore, and then he went into witness protection, protection, uh, the witness protection program. So I'm thinking I'm going to see, um, uh, Mycroft again sooner or later, and possibly because of the whole, um, issue of him being in witness protection and, and the guy he testified against, um, has, you know, found out where he lives and therefore he is, you know, um, uh, and therefore, he um, is trying to kill Mycroft or something like that. But yeah, I'm thinking we're gonna see Mycroft again because we haven't seen him for a while. I think like a year or so. We haven't seen him so um, pretty much since he went under uh, witness protection. So that's what I'm thinking is that we're gonna see him sometime again this season, or at least get a mention of him sometime again this season, like in depth, more in depth of him this season. Um, with that, that's all I really have for predictions. So um, until next week. I will see you guys then, and, uh, want to bring up again, um, like I said last week on, on, um, Elementary's Recap and Review, have a safe and happy Halloween, um, and hope everyone, uh, just has a good time tonight, um, and I just hope everyone has a really good time and doesn't, you know, doesn't do too much where we're, anyone could get hurt, um, or any, anything like that, um, and, uh, just have a safe and happy Halloween, bye guys.